that, how they react to the great intensity level on the, the defensive pressure by Louisville. Melvin Turpin against Charles Jones, and the Kentucky Wildcats have the ball. Hurt off to Dirk Minifield. Straight man-to-man -man by Louisville, as expected. Look for Kentucky to play zone. And Turpin is the guy you want to get the ball too early. Minifield, and he draws first blood. Kentucky on the board. Went right by Wagner. Here's Jones, who's played so well down the stretch. Rejected by Turpin. Jones again. Tipped up by Lancaster. Gordon Jones. Here is Charles Hurt. Every rebound's going to be a battle today. Derek Hord, who has not been playing that well lately, has the ankle difficulty. Melvin Turpin. Tipped up that time by Hurt, and here comes Milt Wagner. Oh, is it tough? Scooter McRae caught something in his eye. They're going to hold that play. He may have lost a contact. Yeah, he's glimpse. got the contact. Now, what you can see right off the bat is that Turpin is getting the ball inside. Now, you can't afford to allow a good scorer like that at his size to get the ball that easily inside. He'll make this shot. Now, here's Jones down on the other end of the court. Goes up. Turpin rejects the first one, but look at that quick leaping ability by Louisville. Jones goes back up. Now here you have Lancaster Gordon, a guard in there, rebounding at about six foot four. Turpin can't get it. You can't allow a team to get three or four opportunities on the offensive boards, and Louisville did right there. Scooter McRae got the contact lens back in. We're ready to go. McRae coming off that game-winning tip against Arkansas. Gordon has played very well the last two times. He's been a double figures backdoor. Minifield with a foul. Now, there's a matchup that Louisville takes advantage of against almost every guard combination in the country, with the exception maybe of Arkansas that had the six foot four guards that could really play. You always have a situation where the 6'4 or 6'5 guards from Louisville can take one of the guards inside, and we'll see that often today. Lancaster Gordon on Minifield. Rodney McRae, the Metro Player of the Year, brings it out to his brother. Here's Wagner. Louisville still looking to get on the scoreboard. Turpin, he'll come up with it. Turpin to go, first half of play. Supposedly going to be Sam Bowie's backup, but he is one of the premier centers in the United States. He won all Southeast Conference honors, and Jim Master, and it's 4 to nothing, Kentucky. Well, right away, I said the pressure was on the Kentucky kids, and it looks like they're handling it in a positive fashion when you hit a jumper like that with nice rhythm. That's far, Kentucky 2-3, and three, and we're going to have a foul on Charles Hurt. Rodney McRae will inbounds. Hurt has played so well this year. He is close to setting a Kentucky field goal percentage mark that was set by Rick Roby. If he continues at his present pace, he'll get it. Now, here we have Dickie Beal coming in the game. Dirk Minifield coming out. I would imagine this is going to be kind of short because this really puts a mismatch in favor of Louisville and the fact that at Lancaster Gordon, Dickie Beal giving up an awful lot of size. Minifield kind of puzzled as he looks at Joe B. Hall. Why am I out of here? But he's going to catch a breather, maybe hyperventilate a little bit. See, there's Lancaster Gordon taking him down in the low post already. Rodney McRae against Hurt. 4-2 now, Kentucky. We've said it before, Rodney McRae, one of the most underrated, outstanding players in America. Billy scored only six points the last two games, but still been a dominant force in some ways. Here's the 2-2-1, full court pressure, and then Louisville goes back nicely into man-to-man. Dickie Beal, one of the quickest players Kentucky has. Master. Bill Wagner is about two inches on him. There's Turpin. You can't play behind Turpin in there without getting some help. He's just too big for Charlie Jones. Turpin had 42 points earlier here in this same place against University of Tennessee this year. Jones takes Turpin inside. Jones comes right back, and it looks like they're going to go at Turpin, try to get him in foul trouble, which Kentucky can ill afford. The Wildcats by two. There's the zone press. Backcourt. It was back. Well, I'll tell you why it wasn't. And I, I just sense backcourt, but you have to have both the ball and the feet over. The ball had not moved over. The feet were over, but not the ball. Hank Nichols, the official, on top of that one all the way. Good call by the official. Boy, it's one of those things instinctively you think's backcourt. Hurt misses, follows, rejected with a foul. It's going to go on Scooter McRae. There's that shot-blocking ability of Louisville. Incredible number of blocks this year. They have 239 team blocks. Now let's take a look at that backcourt situation. Here we go. You see, he did not ever have the ball over half court. And therefore, even though it looked like it was a backcourt situation, it was not. You've got to get the ball over. 
Hurt hits a free throw, makes it 7-4, Kentucky. Charles Hurt out of Shelbyville, Kentucky. One of three seniors in the starting lineup for Joe B. Hall. Rebound, Rodney McCray. McCray, the MVP and the Metro attorney. This year, one game had 19 rebounds. Here is Scooter McCray. Great rebound by Turpin because he didn't go up too soon. Was able to time it perfectly. What's really helped Turpin is he shed the weight from a year ago. Derek Horde. If Derek has a big game, they give Joe Hall some boost because he is a great shooter from the perimeter, or has been, even though he's been down this year. Kentucky with a balance scoring. All five starters now have scored. Derek Hort, as we said, has been struggling. Hasn't played that much, but that shot might ignite him. Your Lancaster Gordon. Gordon is playing so well. Well, Dickie Beal's really got a problem down there because Gordon is posting him up, and you see Louisville setting it up for Gordon to play the low post. The last two games, Gordon has scored 18 and 19 points. See Dirk Minifield's up on the sideline, ready to come back in. That was a nice save that time by Hurt on the baseline. Hort again, and oh, look out now. I'm sure Denny Crum felt that they were going to make Hort make a couple before they played him honestly. But he's showing he can hit him now. A foul on Beal. Beal reaching in. Here's Substitution Dirk. coming back in now will be Minifield. I think it was just to give Dirk a little second or two to settle down and also to give him some instruction because pretty bad mismatch for Dickie Beal on Lancaster Gordon. Third team foul against Kentucky. The first on Beal at the 15-55 mark. The winner of this game would play the Midwest champion, and that'll be decided between Houston and Villanova and Albuquerque. Kentucky in the out-of-bounds is zone, and they stay that way. Jones can't hang on. Turpin. Minifield. Master will look for that jumper if he can get it off the screen. Field has set it a career record as well as a seasonal record in assist at Kentucky, beating Kyle Macy's record. Rebound, Rodney McRae. That's his second. Here comes his brother. Lancaster Gordon. Oh! Nice hustle by Turpin. Just altered the shot a little bit. But if Louisville sees they can break that well, they're going to go on that break. Tempo-wise, Louisville would like to step it up. What do you think of both of these clubs being able to move up and down the court? Derek Gordon now has hit three in a row, and Joe Bial probably saying this is a great time for him to get the shooting touch back. And Denny Crum screaming to his players, you've got to switch when they screen you inside. It's deafening here. 13-6 our score. 14.58 to go in the first half. Stokely Center, Knoxville, Tennessee. This is for the championship of the Mideast as Kentucky leads Louisville. Hey, Gary, you haven't heard this many Kentucky fans cheering in this gym in a long time because there have been some of the most ferocious battles on the collegiate level ever in this gymnasium between Kentucky and Tennessee. And there have never been this many Kentucky people in this gymnasium, I can guarantee you, because Tennessee probably gives them about 10 tickets. Look at Kentucky, the shooting. Louisville's hit only three of 10 shots. They've had a couple to go in and come back out. So the timeout by Louisville, they readjusted the 14-51 mark, reach in by Master. Jim Master really has improved his defense. When he came to Kentucky, he was awful thin. You never thought that he could go ahead and play defense like this, but he's built himself up and really been well-trained by Joe Hall. And he's been compared so much to Kyle Macy. He looks a little like him. He shoots his free throws like him, and maybe that's unfair. Yeah, well, it certainly was. He was a legend in this area. Here's Rodney McRae. Gordon can't hang on. The turnover, the second against Louisville. Louisville is concentrating so much of getting the ball down to Lancaster Gordon and getting away from their offense some. Master, Scooter McRae got a piece of the ball. This up and down has got Melvin Turpin walking. Milt Weichner, the leading scorer for the Cardinals. Tipped by Jones. Now there's what happened. No, they're not going to allow it. Disallowed it. Ball in the cylinder. Ball in the cylinder. Now what happened there is Melvin Turpin was getting down court very slow. 
by getting down there, you can see Charles Jones is wide open, not being blocked out on the boards. Turpin went over to help out. I, I don't know. I think that ball was outside the cylinder. Tough call. It's waved off. It's 13-6. Kentucky with the lead. And Louisville not getting anything going their way early in this ball game. Jones is starting to front Turpin inside, making it a little tougher for him to handle the ball. And you watch Scooter McRae. He's going to be a little bit more conscious now of where Hart goes. Minifield using a pick. Oh, is that rejected by both McRae and Jones? Kentucky will reset the ball. You're not going to challenge those guys. No, you're not going to get many layups inside. It's almost like the Houston situation with their great shot blockers. You don't get a lot of layups. Danny Crum, he'd like to get to the Final Four. In 1980, they won it all. Last year, they got there and lost to the first round. Louisville starting to front people inside, not letting Kentucky get the ball down low. Charles Jones fighting over the top now on Turpin. Look at Scooter. It's 6-9 coming out to pick up Minifield. Right. Louisville can switch because every one of their players can go ahead and take somebody else because of the size. You have guards that can handle forwards. Minifield, boy, he just directs his team so efficiently out of Lexington, Lafayette High School. Scored 1,000 points in his fine career, and we talked about the assist records. Master in a little bit of difficulty. There goes the old Kentucky scissors play. Hitting the ball, the post, and everybody cutting off. Or in a little bit of trouble, gets it back out to the stabilizer. It's showing some class, though, by Kentucky right here. They're not getting upset, not taking a bad shot. After hitting three in a row, oh, the tip goes. That was a prayer. That's Hurt with the basket. 15-6, Kentucky with the lead. Biggest lead of the ball game now for the Wildcats. I think Kentucky surprised Louisville a little bit by coming out tough man-to-man. -to -man. Everybody assumed it'd be a zone. Bill Wagner driving on Horde. Tough shot. That's some technique on a jump shot, isn't it? Beautiful hand control. Second team All-Metro performer Milt Wagner, a sophomore out of Camden, New Jersey. And now we're going to have a substitution, and you're going to see an exciting freshman, Kenny Walker, coming to the ball game, replacing Hoard. Walker was Georgia's Mr. Basketball a year ago. He has been red hot in tournament play. He's a kid that can sky, just a freshman. Hoard had a lot more experience in there for Kentucky coming out of the box. That's probably why Joe Hall wanted him in there early. Turbot out to Master. Kentucky Billy is just shooting the eyes out right now. 17 to 8. And they're taking good shots, Gary. They've got their offensive structure down pat. Jones fouled inside. Charles Jones having to work hard to get anything open inside as Kentucky jamming it up in there. Well, you, you have to wonder how long Melvin Turpin can go at this pace. He's about ready that he might need a blow in there. That's his first foul. Sam Bowie, by the way, sitting on a bench. He's waited, I guess, patiently. Might be the word all year. But the, good news, the good news is that Sam Bowie is now on the heel. Now, here's Turpin, and here's the man that he has had to fill the shoes of, Sam Bowie. Would they have been something if Bowie would have played this year? Well, Gary, if we want to get into the what-ifs, what if Georgia had Wilkins? What if Carolina had Worthy? What if the ball had Cummings? I mean, there's so many what-ifs. Boy, not able to play this year five because seconds. of a fractured chin. And now we've got a five-second call. Joe Hall, Hall he's got to get a technical. He has got to get a technical. He has got to get a technical. You can't walk out on the floor. Billy, in all honesty, you know what happened there? He ran into a cameraman. And as an end result, Joe B. Hall is saying that disrupted our organization. Uh, so we didn't get the play you, now, started right. Here you have a piece of officiating taking place right here. Hank Nichols, one of the best in the country, going down there and explaining to Denny Crum why they did not call the technical foul. Well, let's go back now and look at this. I want to show you the cameraman. Now watch this play. Okay. Oh, I see that... Good call, Gary. I didn't see that play, and that's what Joe Hall was talking about. Good call on your part, and look at what's taking place. They're giving the ball back to Kentucky because our guy was in the way. So everything's stabilized, no technical, no damage done. How about that piece of officiating? We said they're going to have a tough job to do. That's just good common sense officiating. He did go very deep out of bounds on that, in all fairness to that cameraman, but no damage done. We're ready to roll here with 11 and a half minutes to left in the first half. Tell our guy to get out of the way. We're trying to play a ball game here. They do a great job, though. 
I'm not going to stick up for him in that case. <laughs> Master tried to shake Wagner. Hurt. Oh, is he built? He looks like a tight end in football. Uh, Kentucky has probably one of the most comprehensive preseason conditioning programs of anybody in the United States. Weightlifting, running. Jones, he had to jump off on Master. Master pops it. What a pure shooter. Six points. Nine point lead now for the Wildcats. Turpin hanging right in there on Jones. Jones is so active. There he is. Turpin chests him out, and that affected the shot. And Turpin's off on the other end. Walker. That'll be goaltending. Charles Jones guilty of goaltending. Give Walker and Turpin tremendous credit for hustle right here. You can see the two big men let this fast break. Great catch by Walker over the shoulder. Comes down inside, and there's the goaltending off the glass. Good transition by Kentucky. That doesn't happen to Louisville often, where you see big men beat them down the court. Gordon using the pick by Scooter McRae, many field, and Louisville right now trailing by 11, and the Wildcats are playing very well. Hurt. Denny Crum has got to get a timeout here. His club is losing it a little bit, and he is going to call a timeout. He wants a timeout, yeah, but they don't it. see it, Billy. No, one official, the no, one official saw it. One official saw it early. Now. The time went off the clock. One official caught it, and he made the proper call right here. Louisville is going to take the timeout. Well, remember this. On Thursday, Louisville got behind by as many as 12, came back to beat Arkansas, but oh, what a task ahead now. The road to Albuquerque began against Ohio University for Kentucky. Joby Hall didn't think they played well, but they then defeated Indiana. Louisville against Tennessee. That was last week in Evansville, and then that come from behind battle. They defeated Arkansas on the last second tip. Billy, there's one vivid statistic in this game that shows it all. Kentucky is shooting almost 65%. Louisville, 28.6. They are four for 14. Now, I think there are a couple of reasons for that, Gary. First of all, Kentucky's been able to get in their half-court offense very, very well, setting up guys like Master for the jumper. Hort gave him some big jump shots early, which Louisville probably wanted him to go ahead and take and prove that he could make. And for Louisville, they've spent so much time with Lancaster Gordon posting up inside, it's kind of taken them out of their normal offense. Kentucky goes zone after the timeout. Billy Thompson now has checked in for Louisville, the six-foot-eight freshman. Nice move by Joe Hall, throwing Louisville off a little bit more. Milt Wagner's got to get his shot to drop. Rodney McRae tries to follow. It's off of Kentucky. Right on top of the call again is the official. You can see the poise of Louisville, a little shaken. Wagner not taking the shot like you'd expect. Gordon missing. Rodney there again. Thompson tries to follow. They just can't get the ball in the hole. Save, but to the wrong side. Nice Hurt. effort by Hurt. Hurt is off the floor. He gets back in there, and the 2-3 zone kind of confusing Louisville a little bit. Look for Milt Wagner to get one of his jumpers off. Scooter McRae. It's not his shot. Oh, did he go up for the rebound, though? Here is Billy Thompson. They, they oh. got it in final. Tremendous offensive rebound. Almost a replay of the Arkansas game. Four and five tips at a time. Rodney McRae will get credit for the basket. Now, if you're going to rebound offensively like that, you're going to be free for a long pass going the other way on a fast break. You can't crash five guys on the board and not have to pay for it. Now you got Scooter McRae playing against Turpin. This is for the Mid-East Championship. There they are, back inside. You were mentioning, Billy. Good Master defense. Charge. Jim Master with a charging call. Lancaster, Gordon really moving those feet. Gary Cord will come back into the ball game for Kentucky. Hurt will sit down, and also Dickie Beal will come in for Joe B. Hall, and Jim Master will take a seat. Now, in the zone, you can protect Beal a little bit better. I look for Milt Wagner to start getting himself in position for some jump shots. Louisville's getting shots from the wrong guys from the wrong places. Eight minutes, 39 seconds to go. First half, 23-12. Kentucky leads Louisville. Gordon, out to McRae. A lot of people to pass through, but Rodney has it. Beautiful catch inside. McRae now back-to-back -back baskets. 
Here's the press, 2-2-1. Two, two, Louisville's pushing the press back up a little bit. They were full court, now they're pushing it way back up. Now they're gonna have to hurry to get the 10 seconds, they got it. Heads up play by Beal. And that 10 second count still goes on while the ball is in the air. Here's Beal from Covington, Kentucky. From Bristol, Tennessee, as Horde Thompson impeded his shot. Melvin Turpin. Good patience by Turpin. He made the puck fake. Kenny Crum wanting to push off with the arm, and Turpin did do it, but he didn't gain much advantage with it. 25-14, Kentucky. That's deflected by many field out of bounds. That 2-3 zone causing problems. Now here's Louisville trying to get the ball down inside. Good ball movement right here. Look at that catch by McCray and puts it right back up inside. Billy, they're having to make pinpoint passes to get the ball in there. There's another catch by Rodney. Rodney, three in a row for him, and he's bringing Louisville back. He was the center on the national championship team in 1980, made the Olympic club. He's done a lot of things in his career at Louisville. A Metro Conference player of the year, even though he only averaged 11 and a half points a game. He was that center. He was a freshman that year. They won the national championship. Oh, Beal gets I mean, the middle field gets caught in the air. There's Horde, saves it, and he throws it away. Now, wait a minute. Yeah. The other official says it's Kentucky's ball. The ball was tipped, and the official just made a mistake and corrected it. Now, the fans may get upset by that, but you want the guy to make the correct interpretation. So he changes his mind there and says, hey, I, I just made a mistake with my point. At the 6.59 mark, the Wildcats with a 25-16 lead. We've got Brett Barrett coming up. Maybe they're ready to give Turpin a little rest. He's really gone a long time here. 14 minutes and played hard. Here's Kenny Walker. Tipped up and in. I think it'll Eric be hard. Horn. Boy, he's playing a great game. He has eight points. He went over Scooter McRae that time. Kentucky playing such an impressive first half. Louisville in a catch-up posture. Same thing that happened to him Thursday against Arkansas. Reach in. They batted away from Wagner. Three on one. A charge. No basket allowed. A charge on Minifield. Excellent defense by Scooter McRae. Now, what happened to Dickie Beal? is he carried the ball too long. He should have given it off the middle field earlier. See, right here is where he should have made the pass. He went too long. McCray stayed right with him, caught him up in the air. Excellent defensive play and not good judgment by Dickie Beal. So they had a three on one. That's a 16 foul now. You got to give that ball up early, particularly if you got a guy like Minifield on the wing because you know he can handle it. Gordon will challenge Brett Barrett, who just checked in. Brett Barrett, a sophomore from London, Kentucky. Four points now inside. With Turpin Gordon. on the bench, you can see Louisville able to go inside much easier. Jeff Hall getting ready to check in for Louisville. Here's Barrett. Highly recruited player out of Kentucky, and that's going to be off of Louisville. Good hustle by Billy Thompson, diving out for the ball. Here comes Jeff Hall. As you see the time, remaining 5.53, 27-18, Kentucky with the lead. They have the ball, and many field will inbound. Hall in for Wagner, so you've got one good pure shooter taking the place of another. And Hall has really been a guy that can thread it from the outside when he gets that opportunity. Minifield doesn't seem to matter who shoots from outside in this game for Kentucky. He has four points. Zerk's got the total package. Now back to man to man. Kentucky started man, went to the 2-3 zone. Now they're back to man to man again, switching their defenses very nicely. Push off. Brother to brother, and that'll count, and he's fouled. Rodney to Scooter. I think Scooter got away with a push off right there as the ball was in the air. But that's a three-point opportunity right here. Here we're going to see the lob pass inside. See the push off right there. Pushed off Derek Hord, got away with it. And as I said, has a chance for the three-pointer. 17 fouls now against Kentucky. That was the first foul on Hord. Scooter McRae maybe played his best game of his career Thursday, and that went over Arkansas. And Scooter for this game now with three points. 
29-21, they've cut it to eight. Well, they keep so much pressure on, it's hard for them, for, for Louisville, not to have one run at you where they really turn things around with their defense. Louisville, by the way, has committed only one foul in this first half, seven against the Wildcats. Defensive intensity picking up. Kentucky having a harder time getting off good shots. Jeff Hall trying to stay with Minifield. That's a tough job. Dirk a little too quick for Hall. Minifield with six points. Back to a 10-point lead. Four, 48 remaining until half. Billy Thompson really is a good picture inside, but he's pushing. Thompson with a foul. Billy, it's unbelievable what's going to follow after this, too. From the West, we'll have North Carolina State and Virginia, the West Regional Final. Doubleheader here on CBS. Joe B. Hall's team leading by 10, but he's upset about something. Brett Barrett is the recipient of that displeasure. We're going to be back with 4.44 to go until intermission. What a classic. I guess it. Gary, what are you covering? 14? I think I'm going to be doing 14. That's what I did last year. And, Billy, that is something special. And it begins April 7th here on CBS. And talking about something special, <laughs> this game here, everyone's waited so long for it. Anyone disappointed, you think, up to this point? No, I don't think they're disappointed at all. Certainly not the coaches. Joe Hall has to be very happy. And I think the thing that would make him happiest is the way that Derek Hoard has played in this uh, first half because he got some great minutes out of him. Also, the fact that he's got Turpin with the opportunity to rest him right here before half and only one foul on him. You see that? Kentucky shooting 65%, so that's a good statistic as far as Joe B. Hall is concerned. He'd like to continue that. Well, if I were Denny Crum looking at the stats, I'd say, hey, we've only committed one foul and they're shooting 66%. That means we're not really on them. Derek Hord, that's his second miss in a row. Louisville shooting only 36% themselves. Barrett, that's where that bench is coming through. And look at Melvin Turpin cheerleading. Kentucky doesn't recruit any bad players. Brett Barrett was one of the key players in the country as a recruit coming out of New York. Little uh, problem here. Let me tell you what happened here. Jeff Hall upset. He bounced the ball off of one of the Wildcats, the officials yep. asserting their control. You can see Jim Master talking to him. Master, former Mr. Indiana basketball player. As I said, they don't recruit any bad ones. And coming in for him is Harden, another Mr. Indiana basketball player. Roger Harden out of Valparaiso, Indiana. At the line will be Billy Thompson of the 4-14 mark. When you talk about the Mr. Indiana and Mr. Kentucky, that means they were the player of the year in their respective states. Good rebound by Barrett. Boy, he's strong, and he's 6'9", a 230-pounder. Here's Harden. Harden hasn't played that much, really. He's played in 20 games, but a little pressure for him now. Kentucky with their biggest lead of the game, 33-21. Here you get Mr. Georgia out there, Mr. Indiana, Mr. Kentucky, Mr. Tennessee, and Brett Barrett, who was all everything in Long Island. Rebound, Barrett, and that's a foul on Scooter McRae. Scooter felt that he had all of it there, but it might have been such a vicious block that he got called just because he had so much of it. Billy, Billy Thompson inside, you see the shot going up. Thompson not blocking out. You see, he allowed Barrett to come right in behind him. He was watching the ball instead of going for the block out first. I think Scooter just got too much of that ball. Did you see the opening of our show where Barrett said, we're going to be sky high. This isn't any ordinary game. He misses the free throw. That foul on Scooter McRae was his second. Third against Louisville. Charles Jones will be coming back in for the Cardinals. Missed them both. Scooter's rebound. Not a foot and a half over the rim. That's five rebounds for Scooter. Billy Thompson posted up. Now, Billy's giving a good target. He's just not getting the ball. There he is. Yeah, he gives a great target. Billy plays at about 6'9". I don't care what they list him size-wise. He's waiting his time to be a starter next year. This is Gary Bender along with Billy Packer. Glad to have you here for the championship of the Mideast. Gary, a starter next year, an All-American before he gets out. Foul on Rodney McRae. That's his first 14 foul. Now Turpin will come back in for Kentucky, as will Jones. So the two opposing centers will come in at the 321 mark. Kentucky subs did a good job while Turpin was out of there. Joe Hall wanting him to get the rest as well as staying out of foul trouble. Turpin averaging 15 points a game, but I mentioned he had 42 in this very place earlier this year, and they lost that game. Here's Menifield. 
Lancaster Gordon fell asleep. Second time, Minifield's been able to beat them on a penetration. Dirk now with eight points. 35-23. Jones, nice pass to Rodney McRae, and he is fouled. And I believe that's going to be on Melvin Turpin. Now, Joe Hall may have to yank him right now. We'll see it inside. Gary, you made a good call there when you said that was a nice pass. It was a beautiful pass. It was called on Walker, not on Turpin, and I'm sure Joe Hall breathed a sigh of relief there. He had to. So now at the line will be Rodney McRae, good free throw shooter, shooting 72%. He has eight points, three rebounds. Rodney out of Mount Vernon, New York. He's the backbone of this team. The reason that Rodney and Scooter, of course, are in the same class is Scooter had that injury and missed a year, and they caught up to each other. Scooter had entered uh, Louisville a year ahead. Louisville's a good free-throw shooting team. They've been shooting 72% for the year. They have a big advantage on Kentucky in that particular phase of the game, but we saw last night in the Houston game where we thought that would be uh, Achilles tendon for Houston, and they shot so well from the line. At halftime, Brett Musburger scores, highlights in a preview of that Virginia-North Carolina State game. Turnover, that's number three against Kentucky. What happened to Harden is he picked up his dribble. When you play against the Louisville press, you've got to keep that dribble alive. And he's going to leave after that mistake. Jim Master comes in. Joe B. Hall in his 11th year. This year, the regular season champions of the Southeastern Conference for the 34th time. And let's say congratulations to Hugh Durham's club. They're moving on as nobody expected them. They were the conference champion by via winning that uh, postseason tournament. Inside, we have a pushing foul. Minifield trying to get position. That will be the second on Dirk. He's going to go over and ask now, just what did I do? 2.37 left. Now, Dirk is going to claim he got pushed first, and that's the old story. One to one. All of Louisville's scoring, as we look at our shot chart ahead of time, and is coming from inside. Only two shots, Billy, outside the key area or the paint, as they refer to it. And you would expect Milt Wagner to be the fellow that would be taking some of those shots, but he just hadn't had a chance to get open. Gordon makes it a 10-point game and cuts it to nine. 76% free throw shooter looked very good there. And see the press still stays on. Now Charles Jones is, is not backcourt. He's all the way downcourt, so they've really pushed up that press. There's a reach in by Hall. He tips it off to Lancaster Gordon. Not a good shot. But look at this rebound by Rodney. Great rebound, bad shot by Gordon. Rodney McRae now with the 11 points. He scored only six in the two previous tournament games. The press is taking Kentucky out of their offense. Master gets it off to Barrett. Dirk Minifield be wise to pull this ball all the way back out, just as he's doing right now, to get his team back in an offensive structure. The Cardinals with 11 rebounds. Offensively, Kentucky was six, and Rodney's had a handful. Here's Melvin Turpin, almost walked with it. He's so good with that ball off the board. Six points for Melvin Turpin. Billy Thompson out of control. Somehow got it to Jones. You feel a, a little bit of a change right here, Gary. Momentum swinging to Louisville right here as we come down a minute and 34 to go in the half. The press is really picking up intensity. The biggest lead Kentucky had was 12. That'll be a foul on Hall. It's a triple team Kenny Walker. That's the first 15 foul against Louisville. This Hall was not even really recruited by the University of Kentucky until late after he had some great All-Star games. He comes out of the mountains of Kentucky from Westwood, Kentucky, Fairview in that area. And not a lot known about him. He only averaged 28.5 a game. I don't know how he could have missed him. Now, the state of Kentucky turns out a lot of good kids. As I said before, they don't recruit any bad ones. I don't think it's a slap on Hall that they didn't take them. They have so many other good ball players. Seven-point difference in this game. Might not be a bad idea for Kentucky unless they really get a good shot to hang on to this ball going into the half because the momentum is swinging to Louisville. Master picks it out to Barrett. Now you have Rodney McRae down there on Walker. Walker trying to get it low. You see the time on the screen now with a minute seven. I think they should go for one shot. And it looks like they're going to pay off yep. and they're going for advice one. here. They're going for one shot. I think an excellent move by Joe Hall. Momentum was swinging the other way. He's got the lead. No sense getting into further trouble. You got a high double stack. 
four guys set up. Kind of a tough thing to defense as far as taking a ball away from a man. You can't score off this very well, but it's tough for the defense to take the ball away. Nice job by Walker. Down to 21, as we see in the corner. Beal does this so well. Yeah, but Beal shouldn't get caught down in the corners. Got it off to Turpin. You see, 12 seconds. Now 10. Even if you don't get a shot off, it's not a bad idea. Oh, Barrett to Master. There, deciding the issue, and at halftime, Kentucky with a seven-point lead. Scores and highlights. An update on Virginia, North Carolina State. Here is Brent Musburger. All right, Gary, thank you. So far, of course, Kentucky has dictated the pace of this basketball game. But remember, Louisville trailed Arkansas by 16 points, and then they picked the tempo up in the second half. We'll continue here on CBS on the road to Albuquerque after these messages from your local station. Next Sunday on CBS Sports, great college action with the Women's NCAA Basketball Championship. Plus, swimming and diving, track and field, all here on CBS Sports. This is CBS. It's here. It's new. It's brewed with sparkling, pure spring water. Try Heilemann's Old Style, imported from Wisconsin. You are these barbecue. It's calling you. Hickory flavored ribs and chicken saying, come on, dig in. Tender and juicy, smoky and saucy. New Arby's Barbecue. It's calling you. Inviting your family to a fun feast. Meaty, mouth-watering real ribs. You can even grab a slab to go. New Arby's Barbecue. It's calling you. Still to come here on CBS, the West Regional Final featuring two teams from the East, Virginia and North Carolina State, who know each other so very well. It will be two teams from the ACC, teams with vastly different strengths. Virginia led by Big Ralph Sampson. This could be like an ACC championship game. We people play hard. I know we go after each other like we always been. North Carolina State leans on its backcourt. Guards Sidney Lowe and Derek Wittenberg. You know, Ralph's a great player. Uh, we don't want to look at it as denying him. We just want to look at it as gaining something for ourselves going to the Final Four. No, you don't get it. The coaches also provide a contrast. <laughs> <laughs> State's Jim Valvano, a New Yorker gone south, a bundle of emotions. Uh, Virginia's Terry Holland is a southern gentleman. All business. <laughs> Thursday, his superstar was benched with foul trouble, but the Cavaliers showed they are much deeper than anyone imagined. We have uh, great players on our team. You exclude me, everybody on our team can play the game. We know we have good players, and we just know we can do the good job done. It's just getting out there doing it. Samson led Virginia to two regular season wins over North Carolina State, but the Wolfpack gained sweet revenge in the ACC tournament final. That set the stage for a series of dramatic finishes, climaxing with an upset of Nevada Las Vegas last Sunday. If we win Saturday, uh, there's no question about it. We are the team of destiny. North Carolina State against Virginia. A game in which you will want to follow the bouncing ball. You're going to be sky high. We're going to be sky high. The only thing you're sure of is you're going to have two clubs playing 100%. We'll check in with Ogden, Utah, and Steve Grody when we continue on CBS in just a moment. We are Chevrolet. Why has Chevy Citation outsold all front-wheel drives over the last three years combined? You're looking at it. Hatchback versatility with 20 cubic feet of wagon-like convenience. Comfortable room for five people. An electronic fuel-injected standard engine with better mileage estimates than 41 smaller cars. Now get 11.9% financing at participating Chevrolet dealers. Hurry. Offer expires March 31st. This is the time, America. 
Go for it. Go for Michelin and get all the tire your money can buy. Go for Michelin performance. Go for Michelin fuel economy and long tire life. Go for Michelin handling. Don't settle for less. Go for Michelin. This is the time. This is the tire. This is the place. We put America on radials. We want to put you on Michelin. Higher education today. The NCAA is proud to present this special tour of our nation's colleges and universities. Did you know nearly 42% of United States citizens between ages 18 to 24 are enrolled in college? That figure was just over 26% in 1963. As our nation's population increases, the percentage of young people seeking a college education grows. A college education is a great place to challenge yourself for the opportunities in a variety of exciting careers. Higher education today. Challenging. Motivating the mind. The preceding message provided by the NCAA. Dick Stockton and Steve Grody will be covering the West Regional Final Four out in Ogden, Utah. And Steve, I'm wondering if Virginia doesn't have a psychological edge because they lost the ACC tournament final to state. How do you read that? Well, I'll tell you what. I, I thought with the emergence of Houston as a, a top-notch club uh, with NC State winning the tournament, I think some of the attention has shifted away from Virginia, and I don't think there's any question that uh, with the highlights uh, and the headlines uh, moving away from their attention, I, I think that's made them a little bit more relaxed. I really believe that. Sampson seems more determined than ever to finally win this prize, Steve. Well, I, you know, every year I think they go in determined, but certainly three years and, and haven't come away with the big ring, I, I don't think there's any question that uh, uh, they want it more than ever this year. To me, far and away, the, the number one story in this ball game, Brent, has got to be the lack of the three-point goal. Uh, if you take a look at the three games those teams have played this year, the, the loss becomes a Virginia five-point win, and their other two victories uh, just balloon without the three-point play, and, and I think that's going to be the big story of, of this matchup. All right, Steve, I want to show everyone that for Eternity from down Houston way, Phi Slamma Jamma. We'll do that here on CBS in just a moment. Sat down with mom, talk to dad, can't get it together, makes you feel sad. You know you can do it, you wonder where. You want it soon, because you really care. The services can help you so you not only get better, you really grow. Talking Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. You'll work hard, they'll make you a man. Responsibility is part of the plan in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. Prove you can make it, prove it to all. Serving your country and walking tall in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. You've got it together, they'll see in a glance. Thanks to the services, you got the chance in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. It's a great place to start. There's new value in Ram Tough Dodge Trucks. Now only Dodge Truck makes this three-way offer. One, cash back when you buy them. Up to $750 on Ram pickups, $1,000 on Ram chargers. Two, prospector discounts up to $1,000 when you equip them. And three, 11.9% when you finance them. Dare to compare. Only Dodge makes this offer. Cash back, prospector discounts, and 11.9% financing. Dodge Trucks are Ram Tough. When you buy outdoor power equipment, a lot of what you buy is the power. That's why you'll find a Briggs and Stratton engine on more makes and models of equipment than any other engine in the world. Put durable, dependable Briggs and Stratton power to work for you. Whatever brand of equipment you buy, make sure the engine carries our brand. Briggs and Stratton, the power in power equipment. Oh, my. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Thank you, Payne Weber. This marvelous painting is going once, going twice. So, to Mr. Harris. Thank you, Payne Weber. In this highly competitive financial world, Payne Weber believes the quality of life just might depend on the quality of your investments. 
NCAA women's softball. Fast, exciting, competitive. It's more than a game, it's a happening. The 1983 Division I Women's Softball Championship will feature America's premier players, May 25th to 29th at Creighton University in Omaha, Nebraska. Attend an NCAA women's softball game near your home and look forward to this outstanding championship. NCAA women's softball, be part of the excitement. The preceding message provided by the NCAA. Tomorrow afternoon, of course, one of our games, the Midwest Region Final. That would be that tremendously talented Houston team against Villanova. Last night, Houston eliminated Memphis State. Dana Kirk came in with the Tigers, but he just simply could not shut down the front line. Watch Akeem Abdul Olajuwon with a short jump shot for the Cougars. And then we've got to show you this sequence coming up. Clyde Drexler on the steal, going in for the monster jam. Slow motion. What do you think? Pretty good imitation of the doctor right there, isn't it? And Guy Lewis, at the age of 61, he gets younger with plays like that. Keith Lee had 13 points for Memphis State, but only five in the second half because of a tremendous defensive performance by Larry Michaud, who also scored 10 points for the Cougars. There's that famous towel, guys. Now, Abdul Olajuwon of Nigeria was the MVP, 21 points, five blocked shots. And so now, tomorrow, that team will take on Villanova of the Big East. And we will continue on that road to Albuquerque here on CBS in just a moment. Before I swing for the bleacher CDs, I get the EDs for my Wheaties. Before I slam my Gorilla Donkeys, I get the EDs for my Wheaties. The EDs for Wheaties. That undeniable, irresistible urge for the crispy, crunchy, whole wheat taste of the breakfast of champions. Before I put on my little cleaties, I get the EDs for my Wheaties. Part of your good breakfast. Motor Trend Magazine has just announced its import car of the year, and the winner of this prestigious award is the Mazda 626. A series of high-performance road cars Motor Trend says could be the Grand Slam home run of two-liter sedans. In fact, they say the 626 may be the car that sets new standards for the class worldwide. Mazda 626 may just also be the import value of the year. Experience 626. Bob and Sandy Davis needed two incomes to afford the home they wanted. Then tragedy struck. Allstate update. Joint mortgage protection. Sandy died before the mortgage was paid. Allstate Life's joint mortgage protection could have helped pay off their mortgage if either of them died for less than the price of two policies. But the Davises didn't have it. If you both work, talk to an Allstate agent. For Life, Home, and Auto, you're in good hands with Allstate. IBM calls this a personal computer and says a person can afford it, yet it's over $1,200. Apple says computing is a revolution that can't be missed, but at $1,330, you could miss it. Atari says computers are now within reach. Well, the Commodore 64 has more built-in memory than the others, and it's under $600. So, while everyone else talks about the revolution that's coming, you can experience the revolution that's here. Down Kentucky Way, it is far more than a basketball game. It is the social occasion of the last two and a half decades. And there's the wife of the governor of the state of Kentucky, our very own Phyllis George, enjoying the action today. Kentucky right now leading Louisville by seven points at the half. And we'll continue here on CBS on the road to Albuquerque after these messages for your local stations. This is CBS. Today, Liberty National Bank is more than a bank. Today, we're a new world of convenience. Liberty is Money Systems Interchange, offering a network of money machines across Kentucky and beyond. Liberty is MasterCard, too, anywhere in the world. And Liberty is more offices than any other financial institution in Kentucky. Today, more than ever, there are banks, and there is Liberty. Look for the special introductory offer on fully croisoned, great-tasting Heilemann's Old Style. It's imported.
from Wisconsin. Today's regional final game is sponsored by Allstate for home, auto, business, health, and life. You're in good hands with Allstate. The 1983 Honda Motorcycles. Engineered performance for over 20 years. And by Gillette Atra Razor. The twin blade razor that pivots for a close, comfortable shave. Kentucky leads Louisville at halftime, 37 to 30. They've led the entire way. They had a lead as many as 12 points in that first half. But Billy, you sensed something started to happen late in that first half. Well, I thought that Kentucky got out of the box so well, and I thought Derek Cord was the reason for that. He took good shots, and he was taking shots that maybe Louisville didn't expect him to make. But then you had that sense that the press started to move closer and closer and into the fact that it was getting in Kentucky's backcourt. And I felt in the last four or five minutes of the first half that Louisville's press was really starting to take effect. Kentucky shooting the ball extremely well. Look at this, 62%. Louisville at one time was in the 20 percentile. Now they're up to 41. Well, when you consider Louisville holds their opponents down to about 43 percent, you can see that that's almost 20 percent better than what usually happens against Louisville. I'll tell you another stat that's interesting as we go to the board is Louisville's guards have hit only three of 11. And let's look at the board, see if we can pick up something there. Well, what you can pick up in a hurry down in the Kentucky end of the court is that they have beautiful balance in their offense. They've got shots from every place on the court. Inside game with Turpin, good outside game with Minifield, Master, and Horn. So that's beautiful balance and a well-conceived offense. On the other end of the court, you pointed out that the, the Louisville guards have really added nothing to the game offensively. Everything is down inside. A lot of second shots and third shot opportunities down there. So Louisville's game has not been as consistent offensively as it has been Kentucky's. Kentucky's guards, on the other hand, have hit 7 of 12. Many field and Horde. Horde got it started very well. He hit three jumpers early in the ball game. No foul difficulty. Well, I think also so when you look down there, you see Melvin Turpin, who has not touched the ball that month. He's been very effective when he has had it. The big thing there is that he is rested for the second half and only has one personal foul on him. Rodney McCray really playing well in this first half. He had four of five from the field. Would you expect anything else? I mean, the fella really is an all-American ball player. And Rodney's going to inbounds the ball, standing right in front of us. A seven-point lead for Kentucky. The winner will move on to Albuquerque, 20 minutes away from the final four, and they will play the winner of Villanova and Houston in that game. Let's see in the second half if the Louisville guards stay out and play the normal guard position instead of trying to post up so much as they did in the first half. Kentucky starts man-to-man. Charles Jones, and a foul is going to go on Turpin, and that's his second. Turpin did not sit down defensively there. Jones has too much quickness for him at 15 feet if Melvin Turpin's going to stand straight up and down. Charles Jones had six points in the first half, hitting two of six from the field. He'll have two free throws coming. Jones out of Scuba, Mississippi. This is not one of... Uh, Charles' best points in basketball, shooting those foul shots. He has a very unusual release, funny rotation on the ball. You see the percentage. And he misses both of them. That's not what Denny Crum had in mind. Denny Crum would have liked to have had the layup. Manyfield played so well in the first half to hurt. It'll be Horde, Master and Turpin starting for Joby Hall. Nice drive by Horde. Turpin is there. Melvin Turpin is really doing a great job as a big man, not putting the ball up quickly till he gets himself set. Therefore, he's tough to have his shot blocked. He has eight points. He's really come on to become his own man now. Not in the shadow of Bowie. Here is Jones on a fine pass from Gordon. Jones now with eight points. We talk, we talk about catches. That was a good catch by Jones. Go back to Turpin here in a moment. That play that he made, here it comes up now. That'll be off. Uh, you can see that that press is really picking up in intensity. Louisville has pushed it all the way into that backcourt, and it's tough for Kentucky to get the ball moving up court. We'll save that play on turn, but anyway, it is off of Kentucky. That in the ball game is five turnovers. Here's Rodney McRae. A foul, no basket charging. I'm going to say that Rodney McCray got the advantage as he knocked Charles Hurt down before the shot. 
Rodney doesn't show a lot of expression, but again, Louisville picks up that press. I'm surprised Kentucky doesn't send a man long so that Jones has got to go ahead and play honestly back here. Jim Master breaks the pressure in a hurry. 39-32, Kentucky leading Louisville. That, that zone press is pushed so far into the backcourt that you've got to throw over it occasionally just to keep them honest. Rodney McRae coming out on Master. You see that Jones no longer is playing behind Turpin. He's trying to stay in front of him at all times. There he is. Look at him fighting for front position. The, the minute that he gets it, Turpin tries to go out higher, and you want to push him farther away from the basket. Here's the guy that seemingly just knows what the tempo should be for Kentucky, slowing it down a little bit. Ford, Master, Milt Wagner has to respect his range. Charles Jones just not giving him a target to get the ball to Turpin. Excellent defense by Louisville. Every time Turpin takes a position, Jones jumps in front of him. Jones gives away about two inches, maybe three inches, but his jumping ability compensates for it. Many field ducking inside and a foul is going to go on Lancaster Gordon. Reaching in. Now, what may be available for Kentucky is the lob pass to Melvin Turpin. They're going to get Jones up front of him, and then you can go ahead and lob over the top. Now, let's go back to that play we were saving for you. Melvin Turpin, the catch he made. Here you go, Charles Jones there behind him. Turpin trying to get position inside. Now, there was the hook shot by Horn. Turpin makes the rebound, made a good rebound, and kept his ground before he put it back up. 39-32. Kentucky having a very difficult time right now. Trying to get the ball inside. You notice in the beginning of this game, they got into their offense so easily. Right now, every shot's becoming a real contest. All year long, Denny Crum says our shooting's been up and down, but our defense has gotten us here. I think Kentucky's got to go to a lob pass to Melvin Turpin to get Jones honest. They can't get the ball inside to him. Rodney trying to draw the foul. Many field with Turpin. Turpin with 10 points. Louisville has had trouble with big centers. Ralph Sampson being an example. Joe Klein the other night with Arkansas. Lancaster Gordon. Milt Wagner's going to be guilty of fouling. Over the back. Wagner not having much of a game today, Gary. He really can't get on track. He had 15 points in the first round game. And we're talking about Louisville's number one score. They come right back with a 2-2-1 pressure. Ford gets it off to many field with now 17 minutes left. The Cardinals have really been able to lose two opportunities early here. Remember the charge and another one that wouldn't go in for him. But when you keep up this kind of defensive pressure, eventually you get a run. You get two or three minutes where you just get some steals and make a run on the team. At halftime, Kentucky led by seven. They now lead 41-32. Turpin against Jones. that glass so well. He really does. And that makes the shot to have a flatter trajectory, and it goes up there much quicker, so it's tougher to block. Rodney McRae at the other end. Steal. Lancaster Gordon couldn't get it to drop, and he's going to have a foul on Milt Wagner. Another golden opportunity gets away from the Cardinals. But the press is relentless. There goes the lob pass. Excellent timing. Beautiful pass by Jones. Melvin Turpin has all six points. They throw it away again. Kentucky really being played by the turnovers. Here, they've got to throw the ball long over the top of the press because Louisville has moved five men into the backcourt, and there's just not any room for tight passing there. Gordon will inbounds out to Wagner. Wagner needs to hit something. That could help his confidence. And the more you score, the more you can get the press set up. Here's another turnover. Kentucky needs a time. They need the timeout. They've got to take it now. That's the third turnover in a row by Kentucky. They have eight for the game and steal by Minifield. Wagner reaching in. Blocked. Rodney McRae. Turpin follows his own. He has eight points in this half. Eight points in the 
second half. Turpin, 14 for the game. Back door, foul on Manyfield. That was a lob to the guard. Lancaster Gordon showing what an athlete he is. Now here you see Rodney McRae hustling down court. He got that one clean. Look at that. He almost hit his face on the backboard. That foul on Manyfield is his third, so he's going to leave the game. Number 11, Dickie Beal, has checked in for Joe B. Hall. 45-36. Boy, was that a two- or three-minute exchange there that was something. Well, Melvin Turpin must like this court because he's having quite a second half. Had the great game against Tennessee here earlier. 15-51 left. Rodney! Set play. There was a screen on Rodney McRae's man from the backside, and here we go again. Another turnover. set play right here. While all this is taken front on the perimeter, there's a screen for Rodney McRae's man, and he hits it. Kentucky has called a timeout. We'll be back with 15.41 left to play. The standing quarter mile. This machine is about to attack it. A motorcycle that can turn 65 cubic inches into an incredible amount of horsepower. The Honda V65 Magna. It's about to become the world's fastest production motorcycle. Today was my first trial and was I nervous. So, I gave myself an advantage. I found this special Gillette Atra razor in a trial pack for under 50 cents. It has the advantage of a pivoting head. Atra is better than twin blade razors that don't pivot. See, they don't always stay on my beard, but my Atra pivots to keep both blades on my beard longer. Hence, I got a better shave. Close, comfortable. Now get the Atra advantage for under 50 cents. A little advantage can be very appealing. Next Sunday on CBS Sports, great college action with the Women's NCAA Basketball Championship. Plus, swimming and diving, track and field, all here on CBS Sports. Well, this is coming up next as a rematch of that ACC Championship game. There are a lot of interesting sidelights here in this game. North Carolina State, when they had Derek Wittenberg early, had Virginia at home. Wittenberg was sensational the first half, had over 20 points. That's the game in which he was injured. Then NC State went on a slide a little bit without Derek Wittenberg. They lost to Virginia in the regular season again up in Charlottesville. Then they got in the ACC Tournament Final, and for Virginia, they were not able to win that championship for the fourth straight year. Now they face each other again for what is a much more important battle. And the story here, we have 15-36 left to play. 45-38, Kentucky leading, but Louisville making a move. Kentucky went to the 2-3 zone. Lancaster Gordon filled in the middle. And all of a sudden, it's a five-point game. The pressure again. A steal blocked by Turpin and McCray. One economy truck that comes with a five-speed and radio tire standard. It's Mazda's B2000 Sundowner. The only economy truck that comes not only with a five-speed and steel-belted radial, but tinted glass and full carpeting, all standard. And at $57.95, it's also the lowest price truck in America with all that standard equipment. Six I've got $100,000 in this rig, and I protect my investment with Kendall Motor Oil. So, when my son asks... This isn't a big rig like Dad's, but it's a big investment for me. So I took Dad's advice and protect my investment with Kendall Superb 100 Gas-Saving Motor Oil. Its special friction fighters keep my car running smooth and help save gas. You don't have to have a lifetime of experience to have confidence in Kendall. Just a smart dad. Protect your investment with Kendall Confidence. 
I'm Bill Bixby. Watch Marriott Hartley and me spar as two news anchors on Goodnight Beantown. Tell them when, Bill. It's premiering Sunday, April 3rd. Right after 60 Minutes. Is that right? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, let's go back to the last play that Louisville scored on. Kentucky is trying to handle the ball in tight against this pressure. There are five Louisville guys on that end of the half court. Gordon goes in, doesn't get it off, but look at Rodney McRae. Came all the way across the lane to make the tap in. Here's a startling statistic. Hot Swanson, our statistician, points out Kentucky's only cleared midcourt once in their last five possessions. See, now Kentucky's going to try to throw over the press. This is a smart move right here. It took them a long time to do that. They kept trying to handle the ball in the backcourt. you got to throw over that press because Louisville had all five men in the backcourt. Well, that seven-point halftime lead is now a three with 15 minutes to go. Gary, as I mentioned, when you have that relentless press, there are going to be minutes in the game where you go three to five minutes where you just go ahead and take over, and that's what Louisville did right here. Six turnovers by Kentucky in the second half, ten for the game. Kentucky would like to get that ball on into Turpin on this exchange. They want one good shot out of them. There it is. Kenny Walker in the game now for Kentucky. Turpin missing. Rodney McRae playing both ends of the floor. Kentucky got what they wanted there. That was a good play on their part. Here's Scooter McRae wide open. It's a one-point game. Kentucky lining up now to try to throw over the press. Here they go. They're throwing right over the press. Good move. Remember in the first half, the Wildcats led by 12, by seven and a half, now by one. They'd still be wise to go into Turpin again. Keep the pressure on Louisville inside. Danny Crump said it very well. It's been our defense all year, and they've turned this game around with their defense. Jim Master. Big shot. Master with eight points, 47-44. He's the only other Wildcat to score in the second half. All the other scoring coming from Turpin. And in the first half, they got such good divided scoring. Another lob. Billy, that's almost unstoppable. There was Gordon almost drawing a foul from Turpin. And one of the things Kentucky can try to do is to throw over the press and actually go to score. You've got to make them pay for putting five men in the backcourt. Kentucky by one, 13-10 left. Master again. Well, that was downtown. That was a 30-foot jumper. He's in double figures with 10 points. Charles Jones. Turpin didn't get back in time. Jones again. He walked to the ball. There are two men from Louisville had their hands on the ball, and that's why it was a walk. He had, his, he had the ball, and Lancaster Gordon was trying to come to it also. Look at Turpin. Boy, has he got intensity on his face. Minifield has got to go for the score. Here's Master with a hot hand now. Into Hurt. Boy, he wants a shot, doesn't he? Master showing a lot of good positive reaction, too. He's not afraid to put it up. 49-46 Kentucky, 12-36 left in the game. Kentucky doing a nice job here, slowing things down, getting back into their game. Many field, what happened? He Charles Jones with the foul. Jones. Jones wouldn't give him the baseline. That's only his first foul, however. 15 foul against Louisville. Well, Gary, we've almost gone eight minutes in the second half, and the fatigue factor is going to set in because of the intensity level of this press. We'll see which team's got to go to the bench first. Only guy really in foul difficulty in this game is Minifield. He has three for Kentucky. For as tense as it is, that's kind of unusual. You know what? Louisville playing a little zone of their own here on the out-of-bounds situation. He'll probably go back and balance up man-to-man -man as they do right here. Kentucky showing a lot of poise getting back into their offense. Minifield ducking in. Pass. Turpin rejected inside. I like it. Garden at six foot five. Milt Wagner. It's a one-point game again. Now, Denny Crum did a wise thing. He pulled the press back a little bit. Making, he realized what Kentucky was doing, throwing over the top, so he pulled it back. There's a steal by Scooter. Boy, this defense of Louisville is something. Lancaster Gordon again. The first lead of the game. For the first.
first time a lead by Louisville. Well, we talked about momentum with about three minutes to go in the first half, swinging Louisville's way. It's taken them a long time to get the lead, but they really have gotten in control of this ball game. In this second half, Louisville's guards have scored 10 points. Billy, they have eight in the entire first half. Now, Kentucky needs to just get patient, get back into their half-court game. Take some of this momentum away. You've got Hordes coming back in the ball game. Turbin, good position. Excellent catch. He came right down, right back up, put it off the board. Turpin with 16 points. Kentucky by one, 51-50. This is coming up to all the standards everyone wanted for this. It's gut check time for these kids. They've got to be tired. You see Charles Jones holding the pants, the old sign of fatigue wearing in. At the 10.43 mark, Danny Crum up and yelling instructions. There's the 2-3 zone by Kentucky. Getting out of that man-to-man. -man. Louisville showing their maturity, settling down, making sure they don't put up a bad shot. You get the feeling Gordon has gotten all his confidence back after a shaky first half. I think the zone helps Kentucky right here. It slows things down. Scooter McGray can handle the ball like a guard. Milt Wagner. Eight points for Wagner. Second time Louisville's had the lead in this game. Well, they're asking Turpin to do an awful lot. He's coming down to catch the ball in the break. Then he's got to run 90 feet to get down in position. It's got to wear him down. Look at that. 86 by Louisville. Are they hot? Nasser's just as hot, though. He is 3 of 3 in this second half. A seesaw game now. Kentucky has retaken the lead as Derry Corey comes back in. Now Melvin Turpin bent over, trying to get a little bit of rest. Gary Bender, Billy Packer, some history being made here today. They've waited 24 years for this, and I don't think anybody's going to go away disappointed. I think back to 1975 when everybody assumed Louisville would beat UCLA out in San Diego to play Kentucky for the national championship. It yep. didn't happen. Jones tried to follow tip. Hurt comes down with it. Everybody thought it was a sure thing last year with Middle Tennessee knocked off Kentucky, and it didn't happen. Into Turpin, blocked up by Rodney. Way up right to Gordon. Lancaster Gordon now with 14 points. Louisville by one. 54 53. Gary Cord. He had the hot hand early, trying to follow his hurt. You see what Jones did? He just threw the ball back up on the board, keeping it alive, figuring his teammates would eventually get it. McCray is limping a little bit. I don't know if he hurt his leg or what. Gordon is hot now with 16. And then he comes season. He's got Billy Thompson on the way. I tell you though, oh, Dirk Benefield is exhausted. Look at him trying to get his breath out there. He is exhausted. He's asking to come out. There's Turpin. Rebound Jones. Now here's the substitution. Thompson's going to come in. Rodney McCray is limping. I do not know what the extent of his injury is. It looks like it's a calf muscle. And Dirk Minifield sits down. He has played the total exhaustion. And so at the 8.30 mark, it's 56-53. Louisville, their biggest lead of the ball game, and they have the basketball. Jeff Hall in the game. Wagner, Scooter McRae, Billy Thompson, and Charles Jones. Good move by Denny Crum to get some fresh people in there. You wonder how long Melvin Turpin can go before he starts committing maybe a foolish foul because he's tired. And a foul is going to go on Kentucky. It's going to be Hurt in the third. You see Menifield now sitting down. Beal has replaced him. I've often wondered how a guy can play basketball to this level and chew gum at the same time. And I don't say that comically. You know, how, do, how you get your breath. But you see Dirk over there chopping on that gum. The guy that leads the minutes played for Kentucky is Jim Master. He averages about 31 points, or 31 minutes, I should say. 8-11 left in the game. Kentucky changes up. They're coming out, pressuring a little bit out of the 2-3 zone. They're looking over Rodney McRae on the bench line area. It looks like they're looking at his right leg. We'll try to get on that. I think he got a cramp in the calf. Just cramped up on him. 
Here is Jones, foul on Turpin. I, I said when you get a little tired, you have a tendency to start reaching defensively instead of moving your feet and getting in position. There he is. Looks like they, are they putting some ice on it, or what is it? Uh, I, I think it's just, just his cap. I think they're just loosening up the cap. Now, a lot of times you get the cramp, it's not permanent, but it's awful tough to come back in the game. That was the third foul on Turpin. The team fouls are now even at five. Turpin hurt with three, Manyfield with three. Billy Thompson. The big Mo has changed. 58-53. And the press is what's done it for Louisville. They just kept so much pressure on Kentucky, they couldn't get back into their half-court offense. Louisville, the second-ranked chief in the country at the end of the regular season of play. They came into this game with a 15-game winning streak. Charles Jones and Turpin really having a battle for position inside. Turpin is going to take it in. He's not going to be denied, and he is fouled by Scooter McRae. A lot of people wondered if Melvin Turpin would be a worker when he came to college. They said he would never work hard enough to be a great player, but look at this guy right here. You talk about a guy that's worked himself into condition to play. He hasn't come out this half. He's battled all the way. Well, he's lost about 30 pounds. We understand the status of Rodney McRae is a cramp, so you had a call. He'll be coming and, back into the ball game. And he doesn't look too ginger as I look across there trying to stand up. Let's see if he's going to put him back in. Turpin now with 17 points. Here he comes, Rodney McRae. The McRae brothers from Mount Vernon, New York. They don't want their collegiate season to end today. He'll replace his brother, Scooter, who checks out with three fouls. And those are not boos. That's just the Scooter chant. Kentucky now is two of five from the free throw line. Kind of like Steve Bushy from Indiana. You get a complex, you know, if you had a name like Bushy. They're all booing on it. 58-55. The trap on Wagner. Still in the 2-3 zone. Look for some lobs in this, against this zone. Seven minutes to go in the game. Wagner loses it. Turpin off to Beal. That's eight turnovers now against the Cardinals. Beal off to Master. Turpin did not even cross half court that time. He took a little breather. Pretty smart. It's a one-point game. Master shooting so extremely well in the second half. Now with 14. Another thing, Gary, when you recruit Mr. Indiana's and Mr. Kentucky, these are kids with a lot of heart from great winning traditions. They don't give up easily. Master in the second half has hit all four shots he's taken. He's seven of nine for the game. Hey, do you think Danny Crumb's going to try to pull him out of the zone with a little delay? He's spreading it out right now. He's going to call a timeout. Maybe he's going to try to pull him out of that zone. And we're going to have the timeout called 6-23. Kentucky's had only two players in the second half score. That's Turpin and Master. They now trail by one. We're getting closer to a decision. In spite of back-breaking interest rates, unemployment, and recession, we've done what the experts said couldn't be done. We build a new Chrysler Corporation. We build it on high mileage and front-wheel drive, on K cars and LeBarons, convertibles, luxury cars, sports cars. We build it on quality. That's why we back every new car we build for five years or 50,000 miles. Before you put your money down, think. You can go with Chrysler or you can go with somebody else and take your chances. Confidence, we install it at Sears. Confidence, you're looking at it. I can replace your old muffler with a Sears muzzler for only $19.99 plus labor, warranted for as long as you own the car. If it fails, we'll replace it free. Want confidence in your brakes? I've been installing it for years. We'll give you a two-wheel brake job for only $79.99 with a 25,000-mile warranty on brake linings. At Sears Tire and Auto Centers, we install confidence day and night. Sears. It's Knoxville, Tennessee, the University of Tennessee, a beautiful spring day. And it is the site of Bedlam. It's Stokely Athletic Center, the championship game in the Mid-East region. First time in 24 years these two clubs have met, Kentucky and Louisville. And right now, with six minutes and 23 seconds left, Louisville has a one-point lead. You talk about intensity level for basketball. This is a pretty nice arena that Tennessee plays in, but they're building a new arena, seating about 23, 24,000 people. 
It would be one of the biggest on-campus arenas in the United States. Billy, I mentioned the tournament and Masters scored all of Kentucky's 20 points in the second half. And that's good news and bad news story, Gary. Good in the fact that you are getting scoring out of two key people. But it's bad in the fact that if you looked at Kentucky scoring in the first half, it was distributed nicely. They were in their offense. The second half, the press has taken them out of it. More to follow the West Regional Championship game. Virginia, North Carolina State coming up next. And they're bringing the zone out a little bit. Louisville not going into a total delay. They just want to spread the zone and look for some lobs inside. Gordon and Jones gets a foul tip. He has 10 points. Three-point lead now for Louisville. So much value when your guards can go inside and rebound like Lancaster Gordon. Keep that ball alive. Here is Masters hit all his shots in the second half. Beal still in there for Minifield. Oh, Jones moving those feet so well defensively. They're playing off Dickie Beal. He is not an outside shooting threat. So it's going to be hard for, Be for Beal to feed the pivot man because his man's dropping off completely. Turpin lean in. It is going to be a charge. Are they going to count the basket? I think the basket ought to count. They're going to, I believe, yes. Now, we said at the top of the show that this was going to be a very, very difficult game to referee. We're going to see this play right here. I think the guys have done an incredible job because of the intensity level of the game, the quality of the athletes, and so much on the line. Now, there was a case... The body contact took place. Good call by the official. Nice defense. The big thing about that, though, Billy, that was Turpin's fourth foul. We have five minutes, ten seconds left to go in this game. 60-57, Louisville with the lead. And Denny Crump spreading it out. A little bit of a four corners type attack against the zone. Nobody too anxious to shoot from the outside. Looking to get the easy one. Scooter McRae asked for the timeout. Louisville will have two remaining. Kenny Walker will be coming in when we resume the action here at Stokely Athletic Center. 60-57. And Billy and I, at the conclusion of this game, will be selecting a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Right now, I've got several candidates, Mr. Backer. A lot of candidates out there. I, am, I have been so impressed with Melvin Turpin's ability to hang in here physically. Not only has he put points on the board, gotten rebounds, but he's had to play this entire second half without rest. Now, what that is causing, though, is a, a real foul situation for him. Joe Hall would like to have him in the whole way, but he may have to start chasing Louisville pretty soon. Down to 4.57 to go, and Louisville, I think, is going to start to try to take some time off the clock each and every time they touch the ball. Billy, as far as the foul situation is concerned, Turpin has four, Hurd has three, Manyfield three, only Louisville has one man of foul trouble, Scooter McRae has three. Well, I think that uh, Louisville in much better shape there, but you got to remember, if Louisville gets the lead, they're a very good team patiently hanging on to that ball. As we saw last week, what Indiana did to Oklahoma, we'll see Louisville try to do that to Kentucky now. Well, this is a big day for the state of Kentucky. The governor of Kentucky, John Y. Brown on the right, and the lovely Phyllis George Brown of CBS, and the first lady, he is wearing, as you can see, the split coat, the red and the blue. He sat on the Kentucky side the first half, now on the Louisville side on the second. It's like the old Army-Navy games. Remember when the president would go from one side to the other? There's no question what that little kid's rooting for. Here we're in the sea of red, right up against the sea of blue for Kentucky. Danny Crum uh, trying to get a little commercial in there. <laughs> Getting a little refreshing. But day, I don't think there's a lot of saliva left, probably. 60-57, 4.56 to go in this one. I noticed it wasn't a diet drink. I'm sure he doesn't have to worry about keeping his weight down with this kind of tension. I agree. The second half, Louisville, a phenomenal 71% from the field. Now, Louisville's got it packed in there pretty tight. It's hard to make the passes unless they spread out a little more. Here they are, spreading it out. We talked about foul shooting ability. Louisville's got pretty good stats as a team. Really spreading it out now, and Kentucky's in a little 1-3-1 trap. We should mention, Billy, the next alternate hell ball would go to Kentucky, and both teams have 16 fouls. This is a little half-court trap, and Louisville would do well to pass the ball over the top of it and make this ch trap chase. Now, Turpin's not in the game, which was a wise move by Joe Hall, because if you're going to chase, you don't want your big guy having to run around the court. 
Joe Hall's entire staff standing up at one end of the court, Denny Crum at the other. Hurt pulls it off, the turnover off of Scooter McRae. That's nine turnovers, you see the time left. Louisville protecting a three-point lead. Nice move by Joe Hall to get a quicker team out there and not make Melvin Turpin have to chase on defense. Of course, it hurts him on this end of the court because he doesn't have him down there for offense. Eric Minifield back in after that last timeout. Beal filling in, giving him a breather. So the offensive structure changes a little bit. Without a post man, Kentucky plays a wide open game. Nobody really playing the pivot. I guess Walker would fit into that category. Rabbit, really a power forward. Charles Jones has picked him up. Kentucky's got to start thinking a little bit now about getting some shot selection. They're not that far out of it, only three down. You don't want to take a bad one, but you've got to get some kind of offense going. Joe B. Hall holds up one finger. Minifield relays that information to his teammates. Horde, he is fouled by Rodney McRae. Good play by Derek Horde. Denny Crum, Singlin, Roddy, sit down. Don't go up for the pump fake. On Rodney now, his third foul. And that's the seventh team foul, so Kentucky shooting free throws the rest of the game. And Derek Hort, an excellent free throw shooter, has been throughout his career. We saw Hort earlier this year, a brilliant game against Villanova at 26 points. He has eight points in this game, and that's his first point of the second half. I've mentioned this before in doing Kentucky games. Nobody has a more classic foul shooting style than Derek Hort. We mentioned he struggled, but well, he misses there. Hurt with a rebound, and it's all tied. Now Kentucky, Gary, can afford to pack the zone back again a little bit. They've got, with a tie score, they don't have to go out and chase and take a chance for Louisville getting an easy basket on it. Our first tie of the game. We've had lead changes, but never a tie. Here's Rodney McRae, batted away from him, and it's going to go off of Kentucky. They're out of bounds. We Look almost, at Hort. We almost had the jump ball situation, which, as you pointed out, would have been Kentucky's ball. Big, big factor in their favor as we go down to the last 246 of the game. Kentucky a little small on that back line, so I look for Louisville to put that ball up there. They'll go after it from a rebounding standpoint. Kentucky goes now and switches to man-to-man. Kentucky with 16 fouls. They commit another one. Louisville would go to the free throw line. And Gordon can't hang on. Great move by Joe Hall. Takes his team out of the zone. They go man to man. They've got a very quick club out there now. Joe B. Hall very stoic on that cutaway. 60 all to 17. Last two possessions. Louisville has lost the ball. Kentucky going to that double stack offense. That means they've got two fellas on each side lined up with Dirk Minifield all the way back out here. Look at Walker. What's he trying to do? Trouble. Well, everybody was cutting off him, but nobody had any room. And here they are in their double stack offense. Let's see if Kentucky now doesn't hang on to this ball for a while. Now they're going to call for a timeout. Kentucky will have two timeouts left, as will Louisville. Joe B. Hall going to try to orchestrate what he hopes is the go-ahead points with one minute, 48 seconds to play. Well, moms and dads the world around give their kids the same old sound. Got to go to school, be a big success. They wouldn't settle for anything less. Now they've learned whatever you seek, you'll help yourself to reach your peak in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. Need a trade? Looking for a skill. They have hundreds to fit the bill in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. Want more school? Don't have the bread. They'll help pay to get you ahead. Talking Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. Mom and dad, they'll want to shout. He's made it big. There's no doubt. Thanks, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. It's a great place to start. You know, there's nothing like getting together for a nice, friendly game of cards. Right. Jim brings the cards. Uh-oh. Mickey brings the doll. Ooh. Thanks, doll. <laughs> and I bring the beer. Light beer from Miller. Light tastes great. It's got a third less calories than the regular beer. And it's less filling. And you don't want to get filled up when you're dealing with these guys. Mm. Okay, Numa, cut the cards. Mm. Oh, no. Oh! Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer. And less. <laughs> 
site, Stokely Athletic Center. The event, the championship of the Mideast Regional. We're just getting closer to deciding who will be the first team to be added to the Final Four this year. Melvin Turpin now coming into the ball game, and Billy Packer, let's set the scene. As far as foul shooting is concerned, the next foul Kentucky commits, Louisville will be shooting free throws. Kentucky already in the one and one. Kentucky will get the next hell ball, and right now they have the basketball, and we're all even 60 all with 148 to go. I think we're seeing, Gary, some great coaching moves in this game. Denny Crum and what he's done with his pressure. Joe Hall and what he's been able to do in structuring this comeback right here. He's been able now to come back with Melvin Turpin. He used the smaller lineup to go chase, put Turpin down. Now he's got Turpin back in the game. I wouldn't be a bit surprised at Joe Hall saying, if we don't get a layup, we don't put up a shot. They go into the little delay game. Here it is. Double stack. Louisville goes back in his zone. Now, I, I think Kentucky going to hang on to this ball. And a good, wise move. Now, Louisville shows the zone. Now they come back and pick up man-to-man. -man. See Joe Hall in the background there. Standing up. I don't think we'll see a shot from Kentucky unless they have an uncontested layup, and they'll take it all the way down to about 20 seconds and then look to go inside the Turpin. Now, sometimes it can be tough against a pressure team to hang on to the ball for a minute and 10 seconds. Delay game. You don't like to get caught down in the corner. That's the place you can get double teamed. But I think Joe Hall is going to hang on to this thing right down to about 20 seconds. Good double team. It's not what he wanted. And so now one timeout is left for Kentucky as Joby Hall puts his arms around Kenny Walker. And Kentucky not seeing what they liked. Going back and they'll readjust. I don't think that Joe Hall wanted to have to use a timeout there, Gary. Uh, but what happened was, and, and you couldn't fault them, there was no good passing outlet and you don't want to go ahead and get caught with a hell ball situation, nor do you want to go ahead and take the gamble pass. Kentucky still, let's remember, has the arrow pointing in their favor. So you would rather be caught with a tie-up than you would make the bad pass because you're going to get the ball back anyway. Well, as you look at this situation, Kentucky, with the seniors of Ford and Hurt and Manyfield, they want to continue their career at Kentucky. Then you think of Louisville, the two McCrays, who are the seniors, who in the estimation of Denny Crum have really epitomized their whole program the last five years. A totally unselfish type program. The other thing, Gary, I think that's, uh, that's very interesting has been the way these kids have reacted to the game. With all the hoopla, with all the pressure from the external forces, the media, all the people in, in the various booster clubs and put the pressure on the kids, I think they've come out and played a game uh, under very difficult circumstances that has been a fluid ball game and very positive. You know, so often when you have a big event like this, it falls short of expectations. I can remember some very, very big games, football and basketball. That's but the, the yeah. old Super Bowl That's syndrome. Right. You know, so much hype that you get away from the game, but these kids have really executed. They have, and it comes down to 49 seconds to go. The winner to Albuquerque. The loser, well, they wait for next season. Now, this is really a difficult situation when you make those calls. The reason you don't want those timeouts is now you have to get the ball back in bounds, and many times this is very difficult. Nice job by Turpin. Many field out to Kenny Walker. I'd say Walker is the shakiest of the ball handlers here. Of course, he doesn't have the experience of the others. Why would they have him in there instead of Hurt? 60 all. Can't answer that question. See the time? 30. Walker is also the guy you want to foul. 66% free throw shooter. 20 seconds. Kentucky will go. They got to go for the timeout. Timeout. Kentucky would ask for their final timeout. It was a great layup opportunity for Dirk Minifield. He had to go for it, but Jones, just like in the Arkansas game, has been the man of the hour. They call him the Blockbirds, and that might be the biggest block of the year. A lot of time left, though, Gary. Eight seconds. These Mercedes-Benz automobiles have been on the road only since 1971.
far too young to be considered classics. Yet their resale value already is classic because each one of these six Mercedes models, built more than a decade ago, is actually worth more money today than the day it was new. Mercedes-Benz, value that endures. Get organized. 23 seconds to go. Let's look at the remarkable play by Jones, the block on Minifield. Excellent fake by Minifield on the delay. Jones comes all the way down for the foul line, gets the block. As I pointed out, an excellent move by Louisville to go from that block all the way down the court and get the shot before Kentucky can get organized. Now, don't forget, that was a real pressure shot for Lancaster Gordon at the other end, but he took it, hit it, and he's got the, the two-point lead. But most of the times, Gary, you'll see people call the timeout, and then you have to work for a tough shot. Although there was pressure on making it, it was a wide-open jumper. Now, Kentucky has no timeouts left with eight seconds to go. They've got the ball on the side. They've got to go inside. You've got a guy like Minifield, excellent penetrator. Probably want the ball in his hands. Tell him to take it on inside and make the ditch. Kentucky early in this game led by 12. They led by 7 at halftime. And then Louisville with their defense, their jumping ability, their shot blocking, taking the lead with 8 seconds to go. And if you're Denny Crum, you have a tough decision to make here. Do you go ahead and pressure full court, or do you drop back and pick it, pick it up tight, making him to put the ball up from the outside? I'll be anxious to see whether he picks up full court and makes Kentucky really work to get this ball down in. Well, Master hasn't missed a shot in the second half. You'd figure maybe they would go to him. Let's see. I think you'll see Minifield on the drive trying to get the ball inside to Turpin. If not, throw it back out for Master on the jump shot. Minifield off to Beal. There goes Dirk. Two. They're going to have to get it out. He Master in a two. The man who in the second half has been uncanny from outside. Put it in, and we have a five-minute overtime. Excellent play by Kentucky. Well conceived right here. Let Minifield try to drive the ball inside. If he's got nothing, Master on the outside for the jumper. Master showing what a great pure shooter he is, and if you've got the technique under pressure, you can still hit the shot. Billy, he is 5 of 5 in the second half. He has not missed, and of course that last one had to have it, or they would have been all over this year. It's just like the great golf shot. If you've got technique, when the pressure's on, you can still hit it. You see how high Jones was? He was up in the air trying to get to it. And you can see that it was a good call by the official. The ball was released. Even though that the clock showed zero, the ball had been released from the hand prior to that time. Billy, it seems almost fitting and proper that when you wait so long for a classic like this, that it would go to overtime. Now Jones did his job. Kentucky came right back and showed boys doing theirs. Five-minute overtime, and we still are waiting the first team to be added to the 1983 Final Four in Albuquerque. The second one will be decided later, and that will be right here on CBS, immediately following this game, Virginia against North Carolina State. You know, it's kind of interesting, Gary, too. We haven't pointed this out. We talked about the officials in this game, and you don't want to keep pumping them because I think they have worked a fine ball game. But they all came from the same conference, and they have worked some games together this year. It's very unusual that they would get matched up in the tournament because if you remember, we talked about this earlier in the tournament. When they started off, they were working as individuals, not as a team. Billy, neither one of these teams have lost in overtime this year. Kentucky is 2-0. Louisville is 1-0. Well, I'll make my only prediction of the tournament. One of these teams will lose an overtime game. I think that's safe. All right. You know, you talk about this being for the championship of the Mideast. A five-minute overtime, Billy. 4.49 left in it. I think the key is, is it the championship of Kentucky, which will be something they'll talk about much longer. Kentucky will get one timeout in the overtime, Billy, due to the rules. Louisville carries theirs over. They have three. And here's
there's Turpin back in the game, playing down low. Very conservative defense now by Kentucky. Not taking a lot of chances. And overtimes usually take one of two uh, styles. Either you get a lot of scoring or you don't get much at all. They play conservatively, and it looks like because of Kentucky's defense being conservative, Louisville's going to be conservative on offense. Remember now, Turpin is playing with four fouls in this game. And Kentucky changes to their 1-3-1 trap. Try to pick up a little bit more pressure on the ball. Hurt also in there with four. Three, check that. It's Minifield with three. There's the shot. Gordon hit the shot to tie it or give him the lead, and now to give him the lead again in overtime. And remember how effective Louisville's press was all that time, and when Kentucky starts throwing it over the top. Gordon with the steal. He'll put it up. Boy, is he playing well. He's tough to handle. He takes it inside. He can just jump over a guard. 22 points for Gordon. Scooter McRae reach in on her. Now Kentucky's going to have to come out and pressure the ball. They're going to have to go back to man-to-man. -to -man. Boy, that was kind of a subtle way of slipping up on him. They were very quietly attacking, all of a sudden exploded. Yeah, I think what happened there to Charles Hurt is the fact there's so much noise in the gym, he couldn't hear the man coming up behind him. Even on this part and turf, you could normally hear a guy. There's a foul on Jim Master. That's three on Master. Okay, here we're going to see the steal. Turpin, really not a ball handler in that part of the air, area of the court. Lancaster Gordon gets it. I said he would put it up. He'll shoot it right over the top of smaller people. And then Kentucky going down. You see that normally Charles Hurt would have heard the man coming behind him and he would have shifted the ball to the other hand. Look at a great play there by Scooter McRae. What an athletic move. At the line with 10 points, Charles Jones. We had a substitution. Turpin coming out of the ball game. Kenny Walker replaces him. The reason for that, they need to get some pressure on the ball. Being behind, Joe Hall has got to get defensive pressure. Jones gets some both in. Boy, are they off and moving in this overtime. 68-62. Give the Louisville kids some credit. Normally when a team ties you up at the buzzer, they come out with the emotional leverage in the ball game. And here Louisville sat right back down. Oh, another turnover to Scooter McRae. And Caster Gordon. Louisville wisely now plays the clock instead of worrying about more points. Boy, Joe B. Hall's got to be frustrated. Tying it up with the last second, and now down 68-62. Many field with a steal. Walker, Scooter McRae with a rejection. Jim Master rejected by Jones. Many field. Rebound, Jones. No Whitener. Kentucky could use a timeout here, Gary. They've got to get themselves reorganized. They're trying to get it all back at once. They should have taken a time. They only have one, but they're not going to get it now. now. They needed the time there to settle this game back down. Joe Hall's livid, but they really needed to take that timeout. Have you ever seen a team ignite like they have in this overtime? Louisville just blowing them away right now, 70-62. to 62. Well, we could have one team return to the Final Four. There's a possibility that three of last year's Final Four could be there. They're still in it. There's another foul on Master. That's his fourth. It's an eight to nothing score in overtime. Kentucky hasn't scored yet, and Louisville, eight quick, very impressive points. I think it'd be smart, even with a clock stop right now, and even though Kentucky only has one timeout, to go ahead and take it and settle their club back. There's still a minute and 41 to go. You've got to get reorganized. Gary Cord comes out, Beal comes in, Kentucky with four turnovers in this overtime period. Milt Wagner, now 11 points, nine of those coming in the second half. You speak of a second half as now Barrett replaces Hurt. Lancaster Gordon in the second half, Billy, 16 of his 22 points. The basket that gave him the go-ahead, then the first basket in overtime. Wagner. It's now 10 to nothing in this overtime. That's kind of amazing. As I said, I thought the momentum would be in Kentucky's favor after hitting that one at the buzzer. Jim Master 5 of 5 in this second half. 
There he misses. Jones again with a rebound. Kentucky a little disorganized right now, and it's really costing him. Here comes Gordon. Wagner wants the dunk. Fourteen points for Wagner. Unbelievable overtime performance by the Cardinals. The quickness of Louisville. I talked to Vic Bubis before this game, and Vic said he thought Louisville would win because somewhere in the course of the game, quickness would prevail. And it took an overtime for it to take place. Benny Crum. Trying to go to the Final Four for the fifth time in his coaching career. Almost got a foul now. You got a foul. You got a foul. It's 12 to nothing in overtime. going to take the timeout. Arab. Head down. That foul is going on many field. His fourth. 42 seconds left in overtime. Today was my first trial and was I nervous. So, I gave myself an advantage. I found this special Gillette Atra razor in a trial pack for under 50 cents. It has the advantage of a pivoting head. Atra is better than twin blade razors that don't pivot. See, they don't always stay on my beard. But my Atra pivots to keep both blades on my beard longer. Hence, I got a better shave. Close, comfortable. Now get the Atra advantage for under 50 cents. A little advantage can be very appealing. Baseball star Jim Palmer. I hate dandruff. Cantegrin controlled Jim Palmer's dandruff for three days without shampooing. Three days. Tegrin test, day one. Beautiful, so far. Day two. Tegrin's still working. Good thing it's almost airtime. Day three. Tegrin controlled my dandruff three days. Jim Palmer, looking good. Try Tegrin. It passed the three-day test. Tegrin works day after day after day. Scored Kentucky 12 to nothing in this overtime. Billy, have you ever seen an overtime turn around like this? Well, they take all different kinds of styles. I've seen most of them, but uh, I, I was shocked in the fact that I thought Kentucky would have the momentum. I really did. They came back, and uh, when you tie one up like that, you normally come out in that overtime with the other team deflated a little bit. But Louisville just has not given up, and you can see some heads are down. And how many times, Gary, do we see this in the tournament? You know, one team has got to be the loser. Hord and Hurt playing their last game for Kentucky. Milt Wagner with 15 points, 13 of them this half. You know, we talked about the guards in the first half. They hit 3 of 11 for Louisville. Look what Wagner and Gordon did in the second half. They took over. 14 to nothing. And look, and they keep the pressure on so they don't give Kentucky a chance for any easy basket. Many field, and they finally break the ice here in overtime. Back to Gordon. Do you realize that Wagner and Gordon in the second half have scored 28 points? Here is Master. A little too trade, late to trade baskets, though, and here they come, the two guards again. Crom is to the final four for the fifth time. Goaltending, but it's academic. Yeah, he was goaltending, but I think that was just icing on the cake for Charles Jones. Very much underrated player. He's asked to play guys two, three inches taller every game and seems to get by. Bale commits a foul with four seconds. That's a smart play by Lancaster Gordon. I thought just out of enjoyment he was going to go down and dunk it which would have been a technical foul. Denny Crum is taking out his starters. In a way it's kind of tough for the Kentucky kids who played such a great game to see that the score of this game is really not indicative of how tight it was for so so long. They'll play the winner of Villanova Houston when we pick up the action on Saturday in Albuquerque. In either case, they're not going to have room to celebrate because in Houston and Villanova, you've got two clubs that can come after them just as tough as Kentucky did. We want to thank 
for people who worked so diligently to get this game ready to go. Our executive producer, Kevin O'Malley. Our producer, Mike Burks. Our director, Sandy Grossman. They captured the emotion. They captured what this classic was all about. And Louisville will be remembered as the winner the way they turned it around in overtime. is now 32 and 3. They have won 16 in a row. They're on their way to Albuquerque. Kentucky ends their season at 23 and 8. We'll be back with some post-game interviews, but now let's go to New York. Here's Brent Busberger. All right, Gary, it's only appropriate that if you wait 24 years, you should go to overtime. And what a magnificent show in that overtime by Louisville. Your MVPs, Chevrolet goes to Lancaster Gordon of the winning Louisville team, 24 points and four steals for Kentucky, a tremendous performance by Melvin Turpin, 18 points and nine rebounds. And as a result, Chevrolet will present $1,000 to be shared equally by those two fine schools. I know that Louisville was magnificent in overtime, but when you look back on this contest, in the second half, remember that Kentucky had been up by 13 points in the first. It was the inability of Kentucky to handle that man's full court press, Denny Crum. It took them a while before they finally brought the forwards up and went up over the top. Incredible pressure by Louisville. They turned it around and it appeared for just a moment that Denny Crum had taken the air out of the basketball too soon and he let Kentucky climb back in. But in the final analysis, it was that tremendous athletic skill of Louisville that got the job done. And we will continue now on the road to Albuquerque here on CBS in just a moment. State Farm agent Pam Johnson on life insurance. The key in life insurance is listening to the policyholder and trying to determine what that policyholder needs. Now, when a policyholder comes in this office, they don't know that they need whole life or term insurance, but they do know what they want to protect. And so it's my responsibility to sit there and let them talk and listen to them and then try to tailor our life insurance products to their needs. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Choosing the right computer Hi, is help. not an easy decision. That's why you should have a place to go to learn exactly what you need and a place to learn exactly how to use it. And you should have a place to call if you need any help. There is a place that makes it that easy to buy the right computer. Thanks a lot for your help. Where? Where else? I remember standing on the 16th green, looking back and watching Miller and Weisskopf finish out making both of their birdies on uh, 15, and I knew that I really had a crucial putt. And you know how some putts are when you stand over them, you sort of get that feeling that you're going to make them. Well, I had that feeling on that putt. As I hit the putt, I saw it rolling towards the hole, and I saw Willie get excited. I started getting excited, and of course, when it went, I came right out of my shoes, and of course, as Miller said, he said, I made bear tracks all over the green. A tradition unlike any other, the Masters on CBS Sports. Hey, gotta send a package overnight? Call United, United Air Express. 800 package. The name and number after me. Lancaster Gordon was something special for Coach Denny Crum in Louisville. Let's go back now to Gary Bender and Billy Packer. Gary. Well, Denny Crum, you're going to your fifth Final Four. I can't hardly wait. This was a, a great team effort, uh, Gary. I, what can you say when you're down that far to a good team and come back? Uh, you give them the credit. They're the players. They did it all. I just have to be sitting there and enjoyed watching it. Have you ever done that in overtime, put a team away like that? No, we've won it by a few points, but I've never beat anybody that bad in overtime. But it was just the momentum thing. We got the first basket or two, and it just rolled from there. Lancaster, you had 24 points, but 18 of them in the second half. Uh, second half, I feel like, the first half, I feel like I didn't do what I should have. So I came out, I just wanted to play as hard as I could. Were you surprised by the overtime? Uh, 
A little bit. I, Coach Crum had to set up a strategy for the last shot. We didn't execute it, so we went in overtime. But they're a great ball club, and you expect those kind of things from a great ball club. Rodney, I know it has to feel good for you. You were there last year, got knocked out right away. You won the national championship a couple of years ago. How does it feel as a senior going back? Feels right at home. I'm, it's my last time, my brother's last time, and this time we're going down there to take it all. We don't want to come back uh, with a loss. We're going down there with the tensions of winning it all, give Coach Crum another national championship. In any case, Danny, you're going to have to go against a tough club. Villanova and Houston can play. Well, there's no question about that, but at this stage, they're all tough. I just hope we go there and play well. I know we're going to represent the state of Kentucky in uh, the Metro Conference in good fashion. Okay. Good luck okay. to you. Let's go now to Brett Musburger. All right, Gary.